Hi and welcome to this SCB presentation. My name is Henrik Jernbeck and today I have the pleasure of having CEO Mr. Richard Brown of Gaming Innovation Group. Thank you very much. Welcome pleasure. Richard. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. So uh, my first question to you is about the, your latest Sport & Co acquisition. Uh, if we start by going through the reasoning behind the acquisition, and um, perhaps a little background to Sport & Co. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, we completed the acquisition on 1st of April, uh, so we're very pleased with how the integration is going so far as well. We've had some significant milestones already. One of the actual theses of, of, the, of the transaction that we did was a broadening of our addressable market in the short term. It was highly complementary in terms of our geographical jurisdictional split. Uh, we ourselves at Gig pre previously had been operating in something like 14 different regulated jurisdictions. Uh, and they also had a similar number, so and almost no crossover. So we were able to be able to offer the combined products in in, in almost 30 markets, probably by this time next year, more than 30 uh, in regulated jurisdictions in the gambling industry. So that that was a key driver for us in terms of how we could spread the, the and enter new and, and, and very exciting markets. And in conjunction with that, obviously, was the sports book. Historically, we've been a platform and, and player account management system provider. So uh, while we had our own sports book, we could see that the quality of their product the financial performance of the business, their client type, uh, was going to lay, allow us to really move forward into sportsbook-led markets, uh, sp maybe markets both in Europe and uh, in the US where the sportsbook only and casino is not allowed. So that enabled us to be able to really pursue that with, with some real force and, and in com com conjunction with that, be able to offer it to a, a broad uh, geographical split as well. So when you presented the acquisition, acquisition you said that you were going to present new uh, financial targets and yep. today we received some new financial targets for you. Can you go through the financial targets? Yes, certainly. So we've revised our, our long-term financial targets uh, in terms of growth. Historically, we'd kind of said double-digit annual revenue growth. Uh, we've seen the, the performance of the business over the last quarters and we have strong momentum throughout the group. Uh, so we felt, and now with the acquisition of Sport & Co, the opportunities that sit in front of us, we're going to be targeting uh, growth in the region of 20% uh, on an annualized basis. Uh, secondly, was also the profitability or, and the EBITDA margin. Uh, historically, we've been at uh, kind of guiding or uh, targeting around 40% by, uh, of EBITDA margin by 2025. Uh, we see now, as of today, we're at 37.5%. So we're kind of already on, on that barrier two years out from the target. Uh, and we can see we also have a significant operational synergy re uh, realization program coming through over the next kind of 12 months, uh, leveraging the kind of operational scalability that we already have uh, to be and the advancements we've made in our technology, which will continue to bring our cost base down in conjunction with the growth opportunities. So in, as part of that, we've, we've kind of revised our targets now to to actually pursue an inhibitor margin in, the, in, in excess of 50% uh, during 2024. So if we talk a little bit more about uh, the long term vision for gaming innovation, group now when you have Sport & Co consolidated. So how do you try to position yourself compared to your competitors? Um, I think kind of touching on what I said earlier as well, both in our media business, but also in our uh, in the platform and sports betting business, the geographical expansion that we've we've done over the last couple of years really puts us in a very strong place. We have uh, both in the media business, we're operating in more than 30 different jurisdictions, platform business, 26 as of today, with another nine coming through. Uh, and I think that really focusing both the product, the quality, the structures to support regulated uh, eye gaming and, and sports betting within sports be uh, within the sports book and platform business and a very uh, strong market expansion strategy within the media business that is obviously very is a very profitable part of the industry and continue to grow that uh, in there so I think and then combining that we have a, a diverse revenue streams strong structures for growth throughout the business and I think those uh, really put us in a very strong position to, to go and pursue our ambitions as well if we continue on the um... Uh, the geographical expansion. Uh, well, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the pre pre uh, recent deal in Angola. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the first venture into the regulated African market. Yep. And it, this is what deal where you provide what you call the managed service. Correct. Perhaps you could speak a little bit more about the deal and perhaps the upcoming opportunities in Africa. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we're very happy to sign that. That was actually one of the first deals we signed as a kind of collective between the Sport & Co pro product proposition and, and Gaming Innovation Group, where we'll combine our offering, whether product and service, to the client. Um, 
so very pleased to get that one done. We signed also another deal in, in North America with the combined product offering. Um, but for Africa specifically, um, it's an emerging market. We've seen also in our media business has started to gain some more traction in that market. But in the platform business, the markets are starting to regulate. We've seen uh, some businesses start to enter the market at a little bit more pace uh, and such like that. So we felt it was really strong to find a, a local partner, uh, which is a joint venture between a Spanish land based uh, group, uh, retail group, retail gambling group and local uh, license holders. Uh, so we felt that they were a really good partner to move into. Um, it's quite a strong uh, econo- economic growth behind it. Uh, and again, emerging market, and we've seen uh, even in our business that we entered Latin America a couple of years ago, Sporting Co. also a uh, very strong footprint in Latin America. And over the time, as gambling has moved from a retail environment in those markets to online, we've seen a kind of a continued and expedited growth uh, within the segment. So we want to be there uh, early uh, where possible. Uh, and we feel that this is a, yeah, an exciting first step into that continent. Uh, do you see anything in the the iGaming market that's developing that you think you will change the way you do business or change the way that your competitors do business? Um, is there any opportunities arising or perhaps some obstacles on the way? Yeah, I think I think it's a bit of both there, and and it probably comes down to one of the main forces of change within the within the gambling industry, which is the re-reg- local re-regulation of the industry. Uh, this has been ongoing for for quite some time, but it starts to pick up pace. You start to see that uh, emerging with, uh, more uh, more rapidly. It's increasing technical barriers to entry and such like that but that's exactly why we positioned and we've invested lots in the in the last couple of years to position ourselves specifically for that uh, continuing trend so we think that we're very well positioned to capitalize on that change as international operators uh, start to look for localized product and that can take them into certain markets and also the land-based sector also starting to move online as it as it locally regulates so i think those kind of things will continue to drive the industry we've seen sports betting lead regulation in, in a number of markets markets, uh, whether that be North America, uh, but also France and, and Poland, large markets in Europe uh, that remain sports betting only. Uh, and we think that they will eventually change into casino. And that provides us a great opportunity as well, being able to cover both sides of, uh, of the value chain there. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for being here today. Perfect. And uh, thank you for listening.